Hello, and welcome to Association Transformation. This is the newest installment of our weekly conversation aimed at amplifying the impact of nonprofit associations around the world. We are international now. We've mm -hmm. expanded beyond transatlantic. So I'm excited about the, the scope and the breadth of, uh, of our conversations these days. And today I'm excited to introduce my guest, Mr. Andrew Chamberlain! Yay! Woo! Consort Ten. Strategies and Brewer Pratt Solutions bring you today's installment. And what the heck are we talking about today, Andrew? I'm going on a rant. I swear I want oh, to do this. Oh, God. When you All right, let's make me, it quick. Just... <laughs> yeah, yeah we, I, I only want 45 minutes of your time. Oh, and then, my uh... God. <laughs> um, no, so, you know, we spend a lot of time talking about strat planning, obviously. It's what we do, it's part of what we do for a living. Um, we've recorded some good conversations with people, with guests. We've ourselves recorded some good chat about the art of strategic planning, and 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 I, we spend a lot of time talking about governance functions. Um, and I'm, you know, one of the things that I always get deeply frustrated about is this is <laughs> innovative, strate innovative decision making. Wait, what? What's the word? What's the word? How do you say it? What am I saying? You're not getting it. Innovative, innovative, innovative. There you go. Inno innovative. <laughs> Inno innovative. <laughs> innovative. Innovative. I'm saying it exactly the same as you. It's just my accent is are slightly you? different. Yeah, I am. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Innovative decision making. Um, <laughs> don't sorry. laugh at me. This is why I hate doing this podcast. Honestly, it just. Oh my god. <laughs> is this gonna? Do you want me to get your violin out? Is this another "Woe Is Me" Andrew show? Pretty much. Pretty much. Okay. I might just well, do then, it on my own. Yeah. All right. Thanks for joining us. Members and mission first. Let's just anyway, any get let's get let's get on with it, right? Innovative decision making, right? We we work in an industry globally um, that is you know exists in one way or another, you know, for you know, to to foster environments, safe environments for innovation. You know, it doesn't matter what your profession is, um, there's always i think on increasingly so expectations that you know uh, your membership body the professional entity to which you belong you know should can provide uh, you know that safe space to be for creativity sharing ideas sharing problems uh finding solutions innovative solutions arguably to innovative problems and by that i mean stuff that's just happening so quickly these days a lot of the time um, industry is developing at such a pace that you know we, we we need you know these 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 spaces to be creative and yet i am i am finding myself increasingly frustrated with the willingness um at association level for for um organizations to be innovative and i i'm getting you know we I spend a lot of time, as you do, in front of rooms with, you know, boards of directors of associations and their leadership teams. And I I'm, I don't know if it's that there's a, just a natural aversion to risk or a national a natural aversion to innovation. I can't tell what it is, but increasingly I'm, fi I'm finding myself frustrated that there's not enough innovation going on in in this sector. And... And I, I, I hope to get shot down in flames by people uh, when they hear this. And I hope they get in touch with me and say, you're wrong. But at the moment, I'm feeling a wee bit like, where is it going to come from? Where's the spark coming from if it's not from within this, if it's not from within the association sector? You know, I've always seen the innovation come from the members first. And I've had the opportunity in my years to work for some amazing organizations, whether it be in the healthcare field or in construction and infrastructure. I mean, I'm working with members who are saving lives and pushing new, you know, new approaches and new yeah, solutions yeah. to medicine, mm -hmm. to members who are building bridges and huge infrastructure. And yet on the association side, we, we push the status quo. Yeah. And I've I've I like you have seen the disconnect between what members are capable of and what they're pushing each other yeah. to achieve versus yeah. what the association is doing. And you know, I I don't know if these last 12 months have made people more innovative or more risk averse, maybe a little of both. 
Both. Yeah. And mm-hmm. and you know maybe it comes down to the history of the organizations, how they were spawned, what they were intended to accomplish. I, I sometimes find that the more innovative the industry that's being supportive, the more risk averse the association is, as if the members are doing all the all the innovation yeah. in their own mm-hmm. personal careers and personal space, and they want the association to be reliable and static and consistent. Um, and maybe that's, you know, maybe I'm not looking at the whole picture, but I think we just want everyone to be living their most innovative life, right? I mean, is that too yeah. much of an Oprahism? I mean, live your uh, most innovative Oprah. life. Forget Oprah, we've got Elisa. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, well, you know, and look, I accept that not every organization, not every board, not every association needs to be. And in fact, you can't constantly be innovative. You can't constantly be evolving in the sense that, no, you cannot, let me rephrase that, you can be evolving, but you can't be constantly in the state of revolution all the time. You've got to be, um, you've got to have business as usual. Uh, but my concern is I'm, I'm, I'm increasingly worried that, you know, as we post pandemic start to, you know, work out our, our strategic plans for the next five, 10 years, three years, whatever, however long you want, however, as we begin to redefine or review our purpose of our organizations and the mission, et cetera, et cetera. I'm worried that some associations are going to become increasingly irrelevant to their members. Because so is that what failing. you mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's yeah. innovation? I mean, we throw around this term innovation, and it's this arbitrary, you know, corporate buzzword. Yeah, okay. What yeah. does it really mean? I mean, how are you holding? It's not though, is it? It's not. It's not a corporate buzzword. I, it's not innovation. But what does it, it mean? Means, what does it, means it mean? Doing something creatively, changing the way we do things, making so the way we different. do things better. Okay. Well, yeah, being so different. Yeah, being evolution different, yeah. and being different are different. Different for different sake. You're is just saying easier. different too many times now, and I'm totally confused. <laughs> right? I'm just like, why? Is, how many I, times do we say different? It's um, like pivot. It's like pivot early in the pandemic. I hated the word pivot because yeah, it was arbi- yeah. it was arbitrary. It conveyed the importance of motion and movement for the sake of movement. Yep. And it didn't necessarily mean it was intentional or strategic or served the, the mission. Yeah. And innovation, I have the same challenge with that word. If you mean different, if you mean better, if mm-hmm. you mean strong, you know, what the heck are we talking about? And how are we holding boards and executives okay. accountable okay. to this okay. if we can't even define the word? Well... I think we we did just define it, though, didn't we? But it can we mean said, everything and nothing. It can mean everything well, and nothing. Well, I'm saying that I'm using it to say it means that we're embracing opportunity to do things, that to deliver our membership services differently and arguably, you know, to enhance our mem- the value and impact of our membership services. That's innovation. But you're making an assumption that how they're being done now is wrong simply because it's what's current. Well, you know, I'm working with a I mean, group yeah, right the, now. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I'm working you with a group right now, numbers, and they, they get they have great membership numbers. Their value scores are the highest I've seen. They yeah. don't need to change for change's sake. This isn't about just looking for. Yeah, but I never a, you know, said you should do a for solution. Change, looking though. for a problem. You're looking. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not looking for. A, no, I'm not looking for a problem for the solution. I'm saying that I think you know, and, and I'm not saying that every organisation is like this. But I also know I know another clients, couple of clients that I'm working with, who have, who who have the mar- well, for want of a better phrase, the market potential is embarrassing, and yet they haven't been able to capture that that. The, the vast majority of their mem- of of their potential membership just in a UK context never mind you know internationally or whatever else and so you know that points to me i that points to me that they're either comp- they're either irrelevant to the majority of their perceived membership or they're not doing something they're not being innovative in how they deliver and what they deliver so if, for example, right, if for, uh, you said, you know, let me give you an example, right? So, um, you know, one of the things, one of the, from, to my mind, one of the really positive things that has come out of the last 12 months is the opportunity to do more um, and easier 
collaboration, international collaboration. The fact that I get to be abused by you on a weekly basis on this podcast is testament <laughs> you love it. You to love how it. much I value it. But I do. I do value it. And anyone who knows me knows that I love the international piece because I think the world is, is a pool of opportunity for us to dive into. And, um, you know, so, okay, so, right, we've got that international market effectively available to us. Right. So what does that mean in, in practical terms? Well, it means that potentially we could be delivering membership services globally. Right. So what's the risks associated with that? Well, apart from the fact that our content may not be relevant, we could be looking at how do we use, uh, you know, uh, how do we counter global currency fluctuations or how do we counter disparities, disparities in, uh, in uh, currency valuation, etc. How do we avoid banking charges every time we take a payment for a service we're delivering in the UK, for, but we, act, you know, we host it in the UK, but we deliver it in the US? Right. Okay, well, then we should be looking at things like Bitcoin, you know, global okay. currencies, online, acti online um, virtual currencies. It's just an example, right? It's just an example, and it's not a particularly sophisticated one, but it does demonstrate that if we don't get that right, um, when, when, when commerce is getting it right, you know, if we can't keep up with it, then, then we will begin to we will begin to falter and we will begin to fail our members because we can't we can't deliver to them what they expect us to be delivering to them. So you mentioned commerce, and not surprisingly, I have issues with everything you've just said. But um, <laughs> don't spit your water out. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. You know this this mythology that the for profit world is always doing it better, faster, you know, dripping in innovation and that we have to follow every trend they set is, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. And do I see them as examples of innovations and things that the nonprofit community should undertake? Absolutely. But I, it can't be a hard and fast rule that just because the for profits are doing it means it's the way to go and that we should be measuring nonprofits by the same scale. Secondly, I think the lack of innovation and what's, you know, it's a symptom. The lack of innovation is a symptom of other problems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whether it's about the ability to embrace technology, whether it's about the lack of resources, human mm -hmm. or financial. Mm -hmm. I think the, the lack of innovation is the more telling story as to why it's happening. Because you can't just snap your fingers and say, okay, we're gonna be innovative starting tomorrow. Or we now have a strategic plan in place that says we're gonna start being innovative. You have to have addressed those internal, uh, either the apprehension, either the lack of ability, the lack of know-how. You have to address, address these other issues that have prevented you from being innovative. And maybe it's leadership, maybe it's the board themselves, maybe it's mm -hmm. the vision. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't just snap your fingers because innovative is what we're supposed to be right now and and be that. Uh, OK, uh, well, I have obviously I have far more issues with what you just said than what, oh. when. The, <laughs> well, you know, no, I, I'm, only, I'm only teasing you. I think, yeah, I think, you know, I think the yes, I completely agree. I think culturally with I understand, you know, particularly as there's you know, and it's always difficult to articulate someone who doesn't work in the membership world when they say to me, for example, you know, well, why is, why is, if, you know, governance, why is governance different? And you can't, it's sometimes difficult to articulate that, but really it's fundamentally, I think it's about that unique sense of ownership that comes from uh, the, with, or, and within the membership environment, particularly amongst organizations that have perhaps grown organically from voluntary groups into semi-professional entities that have then progressed into full-on, fully staffed, fully immersive, you know, not-for-profit and corporate entities or, you know, not corporate, but you know what I mean. Um, yeah, corporate is the word I mean. Yeah, and, and so I understand, I understand where, you know, at board level, um, where there are tensions between, you know, this sense of ownership and, and also this res the responsibility that individuals feel, you know, uh, about guide you know, or being the custodians of of members' money, uh, being the custodians of of reputation of brand, being the custodians, um, 
and uh, usually on just a very time limited uh, stage, you know, maybe three years or whatever, or maybe you know, maybe six if they if they you know in some cases. But you know, it's still a very time limited um, exposure to to opportunity. But I get all that. I do understand it. But that I don't agree that you can't just turn around and say we are going to be innovative. We are going to do things differently. Because otherwise, how do you ever change it? What do you? Ever, I mean, how do you do it? I mean, you, right, you have a strat planning session. Okay, let's do it. Right, we're sitting down, strat planning. Brilliant. What are we going to agree? We're going to agree that we're going to work towards being innovative. Yes, but see, take? you just you, you used a different set of words. You said work towards. Well, that's being what I'm innovative. asking you. I'm Making saying, a decision uh, to be innovative is different than expecting immediate innovation. I think there has to be a, 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 a large dose of realism. There has to be a self-evaluation of what's held us back. Where, where are the resources? Where is the commitment? Where are these initiatives going to grow from? Yeah. You know, making a decision to become innovative. Yeah. Yes, that should be that should be your opening statement of every board meeting. Mm -hmm. But the expectations for delivery and the uh, measures to which the executive and the staff and the board themselves are held, held accountable need to be realistic or you immediately turn everyone else off from that point forward from trying no. to embrace innovation. No, I mean, you're, it's, you're, count, you're, you're basically contradicting yourself from, on, from our very earliest podcasts when we were talking about... <laughs> uh yeah yeah when we were talking do you about... re-listen do you go back and re-listen to them i listen to them every night i saw i go to sleep with my with <laughs> my podcasts on i'm like what's gonna what's gonna send me to sleep oh one of our podcasts stop it stop <laughs> um it. you know but i'm just we, saying we, let's be realistic let's be and i'm saying i'm saying we can be realistic but we know we know that at the start of this pandemic well you know march 2020 everything was going pear shipped and we know that the people who stepped up and the organizations that thrived were the ones who said, now they either, they either did already have that innovative culture within the organization, and so it wasn't uh, a massive step think? up for them. What, uh, no, but not all of them. Some of them did just have to take the bull by the horns and say, right, we are going to have to now. We're going to do things immediately. We're going to do things differently. And that shifted subsequently the culture within their organization. I am not blanketing But that's not innovation. Not... That's that's survival. Yeah, so... That does, that's a powerful instinct. For, your reason for being innovative, I'm not... Is, is There are many reasons to be innovative and creative. It's not about... And do things differently. It doesn't all... Nothing is... As we know in this industry, in this sector, you cannot tar everybody with the same brush. One... One size does not fit all. In fact, you know, one size fits none. You know, it's it's. Right. I get that. I get that. Um, but but we do know that the organisations that for whatever you know the reason was yes survival fine, but they were still able to do it and they were still able to say we are going to have to innovate right fine. So in the moment of crisis we can do it. So why now then when we're coming out of that crisis now we are still in a form of crisis, crikey, the economic crisis that we're all now facing right. on a global scale, never mind the, the health crisis we are still in the midst of. Why can we not, why have we, why have we got to take it? Why have we got to be patient about it? Why have we got to, why have we got to nurture that culture when we've already demonstrated that those organisations that, for whatever reason, had to be innovative, what, when they just did it and they didn't fail, they thrived, they grew, they grow in still. But again, you're so, making broad generalizations. So are you. <laughs> okay. So <fine>. are you. <laughs> fine, fine. I mean, in my mind, this is, yes, I'm boiling this down. I'm oversimplifying, but being innovative to me is like getting in shape. You can't just go to the gym one day. You can't just decide, snap, I'm going to be five sizes smaller or this strong you it, mm, it's a process mm. it's ongoing and it's forever it's not there's no period at the end of the innovation sentence it's if you want to be innovative it has to be an ongoing thing that you're committing to and investing in and the real question may be why haven't you been innovative prior what has been holding you back yes that's all yeah I'm saying. yeah 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I accept that. I think you need a lot of. I, I'm totally up for when when a board is doing a strategic planning and the senior exec is involved. I'm totally up for uh, that exercise in introspection, understanding where we've come from. Absolutely. I am just what I'm arguing against is that you know the past is a different country. Uh, we can remember it, but we don't have to live there. And True, absolutely. Too, but I think too often, I think that is unfortunately hindering that 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 behaviour is hindering innovation in 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 this sector. Um, and uh, tell me what's going to happen because honestly, I'm I'm impatient for waiting. I I'm impatient for waiting. So what's going to have to what's going to have to happen to get innovation? to be the foundation of this sector. Not safety. Well, it's not safety. I don't want the association no. sector to be safe. I want it to be, it can be a safe place. It could be a place where we can experiment and where we can explore and we can put things out there and we can, it can be a safety net in terms of we trust one another to be a bit left field with our, with our ideas and our, and our formulating our, 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 our questions and our answers. But, what needs to change? What is it that we need to do that's going to satisfy my impatience for this this sector to to be recognised for and to fulfil the potential that we all that we both agree uh, it it has and it should be realising. And you and I both agree on the fact that this this stems from leadership, both staff leadership and board leadership. Definitely, definitely. But, you know, when I think of how do you turn that corner, how do you flip that switch? Where does that, you know, where does that begin? Is it a strategic plan? Is it the creation of uh, innovation or an R&D committee? Is it, uh, is it a conversation with the membership about what they believe, you know, the long-term oh. future can look like? What, where does this start from? Let's be real. What yeah. seed needs it's, to be planted? Yeah, yeah, What's, yeah, what yeah, needs to change to make this happen? Yeah. Well, it's not asking the membership. It's not asking the membership. <laughs> well, it's not. It's not. You're you such ask... an elitist. You're such no, an I'm elitist. No, I'm not. But like that Henry Ford misquote says, you ask people what they want, they'll tell you they want faster horses. Right? <laughs> they, they're not, you know, it's, I'm not saying that, but in, I'm not saying... Um, I'm not being elitist at all. I'm being, I'm being, I've, it's my sense of realism, Elisa. <laughs> With a but dash think, of elitism. I think it's absolutely, yeah, you absolutely need to have that commitment. You need to, you need to publicize, in my opinion, you need to publicize that commitment, um, the commitment, you know, in your strategic plan. And I'm not, I'm only, I'm only being half facetious when I say, well, you're supposed to just put that in your plan, make a statement that says we're going to be innovative, we're going to work towards it. If that's what you need to do to get there, then do it. But hey, you know, way, back you to, to my fitness that... example, you know, when you go on a diet, you got to tell people around you that you're committing to this. It holds you. Absolutely. I, I wholly Absolutely. agree. And then, I wholly and then agree. you can hold your, and you and others can hold you accountable to exactly. it. Exactly. But I then agree. let's make that commitment then. Let's get people, then if that's what we need to do to get people, forget what innovation looks like, because innovation to me may be completely business as usual for you so it you means can't something say something different to every exactly, organization exactly. and every so membership at a different say, pace at a different absolutely. pace absolutely so we can't say you know to be innovative is x y and z because for you oh sorry x y and z uh, thank for you. me thank you for me it'll I be was a confused. b and c yeah it'll be a <laughs> b and c so i'm not saying that though but i am saying that you know let us recognize that let, I, I want as many, every organization that I'm going to work with um, here on in, I am going to be um, challenging them to, and I usually do actually, it's not new for me, but I am, and I know you challenge as well, in a really positive, constructive way with your clients, you're just challenging in a really other way with me. Um, oh my God. I am going to challenge them to, to really think about what is it that we can do to innovate because uh, innovate equals influence and right now I think we all need a bit of influence as well um, fine, fine. So yeah. I'll, I'll come I agree I agree and I think we we found a good kind of middle ground here Don't always you agree? do always do with you I always <laughs> am wanting to find middle ground until you browbeat me into you're submission. so disingenuous 
you browbeat me into into submission. I don't even oh know what that word God. means. I'm going to go look for a dictionary now. But, All right. Uh, well, Andrew sobs. Um, I will thank everyone for joining us this week. And uh, whether it's innovative decision making or another topic important to your association, um, we'd love to hear from you. You can tweet us at Association mm -hmm. Transformation or email us your hello at your and uh, we look to our audience we look to our network we look to this amazing industry that is mm -hmm. the nonprofit association world for ideas for expertise for experiences and we will bring those to you each and every week we hope you've enjoyed um, this week's association transformation um, our musings andrew's complaining all of it oh, um and from God, whatever <laughs> From wherever you access your podcasts, um, we're there. So look for Association Transformation. I think we're on every platform at this point. Marcus is a favorite and tune in next time. And uh, until then, I will say stay well and put your members and your mission first. Association Transformation is brought to you in partnership between Consult Strategy and Brewer Pratt Solutions in support of the Institute of Association Leadership.